So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to find uh, the player position in any game. So first of all, most games are either going to store the position in either a float or a double. I recommend you start with the float. If you don't find it there, then you go ahead and start with the double. But for this game, I know it's a float, so we're going to do that straight away. Um, then I want you to go to settings. We're going to set up two keybinds. We're going to set up increase value and decrease value. I recommend you do plus or equals or whatever for increase value and minus for decrease value. Um, these are both pretty safe hotkeys. Like most games don't have anything assigned to them, so it doesn't like you won't open a menu by clicking those keys. So I usually go for those. Um, so we're going to go ahead and go unknown initial value and scan for that. And I already made this little tower here, so it's a lot easier to scan, but um, we're going to we're gonna scan for the height because it's a lot easier. Let's say if we wanted to scan for the x, but we wanted to scan for the z value, it's going to be a lot harder because we don't know what, what increases it or what decreases it because I don't know which direction is positive. With height, it's pretty straightforward. Like, up is just positive 99% of the time, so we're going to do that. Um, so we're going to go up little tower, scan for increased, 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 increased. And then start going down. And we get, usually it'll stop um, slowing down after a thousand or maybe 500 if you're lucky. So what you do is you Drag all the values down, and you're going to sort them by value. And you're going to see what kind of values make sense. So when we look at this, we see that most values are either above 0 or in the range of 0 to 200, 230. So what we're going to do, we're going to delete these two because they don't make sense and they're kind of jittery. And yeah, let's get rid of them. These two, maybe. We'll test them out real quick. One, no. Didn't change anything. We delete them. Now we're gonna do sort of. We're gonna narrow this down. Um, you could keep scanning maybe for a couple minutes and maybe narrow this down a bit, but that just takes forever. The easier way is to just do like a binary scan kind of thing. So we're gonna do halfway. Let's do until here, and we're gonna do two thirty. We change the value, it didn't do anything, so that means none of these values are actually the position or the. So we delete them. We're gonna do that again. I'm gonna go to the bottom. Um, when you're changing these values, make sure they're around the same area, because sometimes if I change a value that's maybe 30 and I change it to 200, that might lead to some issues and maybe mess up your game, kill your player, put him out of bounds, and then. You don't have your address is no longer valid because your player is dead. So be careful with that. So we're gonna go up to a hundred, change that to hundred. Nothing changed. Delete it. Do it again. One twenty-five. Something happens for a second. So something something's up here. We're gonna test the other ones. See what we have. Now let's do. 178. Nothing happens, so we know for sure it's in this range. So we're going to go ahead and change the values up to 106, because that's like a little group we have here. Maybe, oops, I didn't, I didn't shift click. Do 107. That one, it's in there. Let's make sure it's not on this group. Sometimes you can find two values that can affect the position. But maybe one's visual and the other might be the actual player position. So we're going to go ahead and change this one, 125, definitely not on this side. One thing that also gives a clue is these values, after I change them, they haven't updated. So that means it's probably in one of these. Because I haven't moved, so why would these values actually change? Unless unless it's like my eyes or something and the game might like, bob them a bit, but let's try it. Ooh, it changed a bit. 
one and ten. Okay, that's moving that. Oh, we found the x position. That's crazy. I guess x is positive or whichever x or z. We didn't actually find the height. That's funny. Uh, let's try this. These ones one twenty. Uh, that one kind of teleported me. I don't know what that was. Now uh, let's try this group over here. One twenty. Doesn't really do anything. Same thing. It's teleporting me, but not actually moving me. Uh, delete this one. One twenty. Let's make sure our values are still in here. Okay, our values are still still in there. Sometimes you gotta make sure you can change all of them. So one twenty. It's not in this group. You get the point. So after we find this value, then we can find the other positions um, around it as well. So if we have x, we can easily find y and z just from this address. So we're going to do half of this, 120, line in here, 115, it's in there. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little tedious sometimes. Delete that, 120. Some of these ones. No, we get to the these ones. It's one of these. Twenty-five. Then twenty. Okay, so we found. I'm guessing as the X. So what we're gonna do is try to find the Y and Z. So we're gonna right click. Um, process memory region where that menu go oh here it is at the bottom and scroll up click it again just to make sure where it is here we are right click and one thing you can do is display as float and let's see what's around our value. So our value is this one, 120. So this is probably x, y, and z. Let's see. Just a bit to the side. What do we have? This is x. This is y or z, whichever. And this is our height. So we found all three values. Uh, one thing you can do is, sort of looking at it from here, you can go to dissect data structures, copy the address, put it in there. I'm not sure it's the same one, so I'm just going to copy and paste. Paste it, make a new structure. And here we go, aromatically, the text that they're all floats. Um, if you found the y, you can just subtract 4 from this, so this would be 8. And here we go, we still have those three values. Um, put it back to C. We can also do find what Rice's address, or find what accesses this address, and see that, and try to find the local player pointer from that, but that's not the point of this video. Um, well, yeah, that's it. Hope that helped you out. Thanks for watching.